Hi, my name is John Buse. I'm from the University of North Carolina, and I've been asked by IDOC to comment on an emerging class of antihyperglycemic therapies called the SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, so that stands for sodium glucose transporter 2. Um, it's a, a protein uh, that is uh, involved in uh, the transport of glucose, um, particularly in the kidney um, and uh, in the intestine. SGLT2 is largely specific uh, for the kidney. Uh, SGLT1 uh, is uh, more highly expressed in the intestine. Um, and there are natural mutants of SGLT2 uh, in humans uh, that have glycosuria, uh, but really no long-term consequences with regards to kidney issues or infection or anything of the like. So these people live out completely normal uh, lifespans. Um, and this uh, signal uh, suggested that perhaps we could develop a drug to uh, inhibit or block SGLT2, uh, which would then result in more glucose uh, passing into the urine. So it's filtered by the glomerulus enters the tubule but is not reabsorbed uh, as is the case in normals. Uh, these agents uh, lower glucose uh, and also lower weight. Um, the only substantial safety concern that's emerged in the clinical trials program uh, are urinary tract infections uh, and particularly uh, um, genital infections like uh, vaginitis and balanitis. Um, and those, uh, those uh, adverse effects uh, can be uh, present in 5 to 10 percent of patients. Um, in general, they tend to occur earlier in the course of, uh, of therapy and tend to be less of an issue uh, with longer duration therapy. Again, remember, uh, in the natural mutants who lack uh, an effective SGLT2, um, there is no uh, increased risk of uh, of uh, infection. So the notion may be that it takes a while for the urinary tract and the genital tract to adapt to the higher level of uh, glucose um, in the urine, but once that adaptation occurs, um, that, um, that um, it, it, it's very likely to be uh, very well tolerated. The excitement about this class is um, that th these agents should theoretically lower glucose in everyone. Um, the higher the glucose, the more uh, glomerular filtration of glucose there will be, and, uh, and theoretically the greater uh, spillage of glucose into the urine, the greater glycemic effect um, um, from the drug. Um, it should not promote hypoglycemia. Um, and it will be associated with weight loss because of the loss of calories from the body. Um, so there's a, a fair amount of uh, uh, expectation and uh, enthusiasm for this class of drugs that um, is now wrapping up uh, phase three studies in the, in the earliest uh, agents under development. There are several of these agents that are um, in the process of being, um, being evaluated, and they could be available in the marketplace uh, as early as 2012. Um, the, the, the excitement is now we could potentially see, uh, see new ways to lower glucose in patients where we've not been able to effectively lower glucose in the past, uh, like patients on uh, multiple daily injections of insulin, um, that we also will have another agent that uh, lowers glucose and improves uh, weight at the same time creating the possibility of even combinations of agents that both lower glucose um, and reduce weight uh, for the future of diabetes care. Um, so I, I think the SGLT2 inhibitors will be uh, the, next, uh, the next class of drugs in the management of patients with type 2 diabetes, and we look forward to more information over the next couple of years in that regard. So for IDOC, this is John Buse. Thank you very much for listening.